Hello, Jamalov here and welcome back to Beginner's Guide to Dwarf Fortress. A tutorial series where I'm building an example fortress showing how to build a fortress and how to help your dwarf survive. In the previous part I set out administrators for the fortress. In the noble screen, even that they are all the same dwarf at the moment, I set out roles for broker, manager and a bookkeeper. With the bookkeeper I'm able to see in the stocks what items I have, how many items I have. The broker will enable me to trade with the traders that are coming and I can see the created wealth of the fortress based on the numbers that the bookkeeper is providing. And with the manager in the unit screen and manager I can uh, create batch of items and then uh, get notifications when those are done and the manager takes care of uh, assigning those tasks in the workshops. This time I'll be creating bedrooms for the dwarves, possibly processing some plants, plants when those uh, pigtails and sweet pots come out of the, out of the farms. Um, I'll also start planning out a room for the turkeys, and I actually think I will do it right now. I want those rooms to be right here next to the kitchen. I will make two rooms for them. The miner can mine those out while, uh, while I plan out things. And um, also uh, I want to redesign my entrance a bit, or actually I want to redesign where the trade depot goes because uh, I had a little design flaw here mm. because the wagons of the caravans cannot travel over these uh, these traps and uh, I need to provide an alternate access to this trade depot and while I'm doing that I will actually uh, move the trade depot elsewhere creating it in a safe way so I will start a plans for that with the idea that the traders will be able to access the trade depot from the outside while uh, that is not an open access to my fortress so I will block the path between my fortress and the trade depot uh, with a drawbridge when I when I don't want it to be uh, completely open, but the traders will find it But uh, that will be more clear when I start to dig that out and when I start to uh, lay those plans there Let's go Downstairs to my dining hall and then uh, one room below is my dormitory and uh, the dwarves are uh, are completely happy sleeping in a common bedroom area like this, the dormitory. And there are actually some benefits from this as well, because uh, there are dwarven vampires around, and uh, they are uh, more easily spotted if everyone sleeps in a common sleeping areas like this, because they uh, go and uh, suck the blood out of their victims uh, when, the, when the dwarves sleep. Um, so uh, with uh, with everyone here, uh, it would be uh, easy easier to spot who is vampire and who is not. But however, the dwarves enjoy their own privacy, their own bedroom. They can uh, own those items. They will admire their own own items and get happy thoughts of that. So I will dig out individual bedrooms for them. Uh, Digging down from uh, here in the dormitory, one level below, I will create an up and down stairway and I will also create another one below. On its simplest level, uh, bedroom for a dwarf is uh, one square, that is the door, so that the bedroom is uh, closable, and then uh, one other square with bed. Uh, actually, I could even uh, just remove the door and just have one square with a bed and call that a bedroom for the dwarf. But uh, uh, I'll go a bit farther than that and uh, add two squares for the bedroom, giving bed and then uh, something to store items to, a cover, and then a cabinet for each dwarf. Three squares. And uh, there are many ways to do this. Uh, bedroom design. You can uh, you can create uh, any kind of rooms you want. You can give everyone a three by three rooms. You can go as far as giving everyone five by five rooms. But uh, I'll go for uh, 
kind of a maximum efficiency with my uh, with my design utilizing several levels and uh, on each individual level the distance distance to the bedrooms is uh, is as small as possible with the idea that since the dwarves will often go into their bedrooms to either sleep or uh, just hang out in their own own place uh, doing doing this I will uh, I'll um, minimize the time they spend there and maximize the time they spend on productive activity um, I think I s at some point took this uh, took this design from the Dwarf Fortress wiki it's kind of a pattern pattern kind of thing and um, as said you can uh, you can do these things in a, in many ways I've just uh, gotten used to this one I don't always do do it like this but uh, on the other hand quite often uh, quite often I do and uh, this will uh, make a whole lot more sense when uh, when I'm uh, <laughs> when I'm actually building these bedrooms and furnishing these bedrooms with uh, with uh, beds and uh, beds and those other other furniture and then uh, one more Short. Right, that is my uh, that is my bedroom with these ones being too short, and the miner can now come and uh, dig this out, and uh, I'll be then placing doors beds, coffers and cabinets in here when the mason has finished building all of that and of course all of the, the carpenter as well I will uh, unpause here so that the miner can start doing this uh, he might also be digging out the room for the turkeys and he's doing that right now um, for the turkeys I, I need uh, stone crafter and I'll create it here building workshops and then a crafts dwarf workshop with R uh, place it um, I'll place it here make it out of obsidian and uh, that requires someone with uh, stone or wood or bone working I don't have any of those so temporarily I will make my uh, I will make my um, I was actually thinking about my woodcutter. Woodcutter who is uh, taking down some trees. He still has some left. Mm. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will make him with preferences labor again. Uh, temporarily setting things out here, not using dwarf uh, dwarf therapist in the in the crafts set out stone crafting for the woodcutter. When he's not felling those trees he'll uh, have time to go and finish that uh, that stone cra crafts dwarf uh, building. Well, actually, why did the mason go and do it? Mm, well, for building stuff uh, will require the stone crafter. Alright, but uh, I'll while here create stone stockpiles for uh, for these uh, these workshops, the mechanics, masons and uh, and the crafts dwarf. I uh, often use the stone which is most common in the area so for now I'll choose obsidian. It's also good because it is valuable and uh, and it's also magma safe in case I need to create some items like that. But more about that when uh, 
and that comes uh, timely. So from the other stones, set obsidian for all these, and then increase the max wheelbarrow to three, which uh, with pressing W. And there as well, and there as well. This will uh, help these uh, who work in the workshops, the mason, the crafts dwarf, and uh, mechanic to have stones right there, so they don't have to run around the fortress getting stones, but the other other dwarves will haul stones for these dwarves. Uh, the crafts dwarf workshop requires other items as well as stone, but for now I'm using it only for stone crafting, so that is, uh, that is fine for now. And uh, I'll be expanding this level, uh, expanding this level here when um, when I get more dwarves and I start uh, creating more things, I will create more stockpiles there and so on. So uh, the rooms are now uh, dug out for my turkeys. I can also already create the zone here. So uh, from corner to corner, then set it. This set this out to be pen and pastor, and then with capital N set pastor information, and I will assign moving with plus and minus here with enter assign all these hens and cobblers to be taken here and when I get those um, when I get those nest boxes done uh, the, I can I will build them there I will assign fruit manager a couple of new wheelbarrows now that I created those stockpiles Let's make six, and I will also order a nest box from rock, twelve of them. Uh, when I get immigrants, more dwarves, one of them uh, will become the... Oh, are those kangaroos? Yeah, nice kangaroos. Anything else in the area? No, just kangaroos. Nice, uh, nice bouncy kangaroos. They are curiously coming close to my uh, fortress. Oh, the cat is going there. Looks like the kangaroos are very, very peaceful, because even my dwarves are not afraid of them. Right, the turkeys are moved into place. I have queued up uh, building of the nest boxes. And uh, the bedrooms are here being built when the miner is not uh, drinking or eating. And... Uh, Looks like the expedition leader is on a break. Okay, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, while that is happening, I can uh, start planning this um, this new entrance. So the idea is that uh, I'll create a path, a uh, free free wide path from the outside, either from here or I can duck it out from here, from further away, um, to a to a area where I will build my trade depot, and then uh, I will create a path from my uh, fortress to that place. Yeah, I think I will create it here. Let's make it like that. So here, here'll be a five by five area, and here in the middle. Uh, let's see that I don't have anything below. I don't. I will create. Actually, no, no, no. This is this is not. This is not the place where I want this. Mm. I need one more level here. Actually, I need I need several. Mm. Need to think. Need to think. If I want to expand this room to be a, to be something like barracks, that would be there. Mm. How about we create a trade depot there? Five by five area. No, it'll be like that. Uh, 
Okay, this is why I don't designate things while uh, without pausing the video because I can't can't think. So uh, give me a second and I'll I'll plan this thing out here. Okay, there there it is, and now let me explain it to you. The so five by five square is pretty simple. The trade depot will be there, and uh, from here down down below, if I go a level up. From here, I will uh, dig or channel down and ramp into this area where uh, the caravan caravan come, can come to the trade depot. But then I will create a bridge here, closing closing this when the caravan has arrived at the trade depot. And until they uh, they are there, I will have here another drawbridge that is kept uh, kept. Uh, Lift it, uh, lift it until the caravan is here, and then I can close this outside bridge, and only then open the bridge inside to let my dwarves into the trade depot. And this way, this uh, whole way into the fortress is never open uh, fully. And uh, that'll make more sense uh, when it's <laughs> when it's actually done. But I will uh, I will clear out some uh, some trees here uh, outside for it, and uh, the miner will at some moment, uh, some point, uh, dig that out. He's currently on a break. While that is happening, I do want to defend this uh, main pathway, so uh, placing some. Uh, Placing some more traps here. There we go. And the woodcutter has so far been busy cutting down wood. Mm. So I have not been able to get the nest boxes yet. Alright. Check the stocks for diff what kind of plants we have. We have pigtails. Uh, I will wait until we get some more, and then I will process them. The processing is uh, slightly complicated because it doesn't di directly say what are you processing, uh, because in the farmer's workshop you have uh, tasks to process plants, which is processing pigtails in the thread. You have process plants to bags, which is uh, processing quarry bushes in the quarry bush leaves. And then you have process plants to barrel, which is uh, creating dwarven syrup out of, uh, out, of, out of the sweet pods. So these are just something you need to remember or always uh, double check from the, from the dwarf wardress wiki, for example. But uh, more about that when we actually get those pigtails and uh, and sweet parts. Um, I'll place some tables here in my dining room while waiting, and some chairs in front of them. Let's create a row of tables here. All the furniture, which is quite important when we create those bedrooms. Uh, Old furniture won't block um, movement, so we can place uh, place uh, easily create the bedrooms in a way that there is a bed or something straight off the door, and the whole room is filled with furniture. Dwarves will still be able to walk there just as well. Right now, everyone is uh, is quite busy. The miner is on a break, so nothing is happening there. Mm, I'll need to keep an eye on the on the farmers. Yeah, I don't know if if oh, what is that? No unit list. Grey langur. This was some kind of a uh, small monkeys. Okay. Probably not too dangerous for my dwarves. The woodcutter is storing items, storing wood. Mm, has 
Has the nest box orders gone in? Yes. Just making sure that that labor actually went in for the man. Craft stone crafting. Okay. Hopefully he gets around to that at some moment point. Well, on the other hand, I'm I'm not in a particular rush with those things, even though it is midsummer, and I wouldn't mind wouldn't mind getting those things. Of course, since I have assigned the fellow to cut down uh, cut down some trees, uh, I guess it's my own fault. Looks like the carpenter has more time, so let's make him the stone crafter. He can go do that. Let's take it off the woodcutter. This is only only temporary. I'm expecting the first immigrants quite soon anyway. Miner is working on the bedrooms, however, a uh, whole lot of things for those bedrooms, the coffers and cabinets are uh, still waiting. Uh, the doors are there first, good, so I can create bedrooms from the... when I get the beds. Uh, one thing I haven't done is a gem stockpile, so let's create that. B for stockpiles and then E for gems. And I will create it to be 4x4, four four, and that's it. With that stockpile, the dwarves will gather these, uh, this case, mostly band fire opals into that stockpile. And then I will need a um, jeweler's workshop and someone with gem cutting labor to uh, cut those gems. But uh, I will wait and see if, uh, if I get the gem cutter from the immigrants at some moment and then start cutting gems with a skilled dwarf instead of trading trading one from the from the ground up the sweet pots and pigtails are being gathered so there are both pigtails and sweet pots there so i will for example sake process plants to make a big tail thread and then I will process a couple of uh, sweet pods into a syrup. It is important that I keep uh, keep processing the plants either into, uh, into food or food items or drinks because processing those plants uh, freeze up the seeds from those plants. So I will also uh, queue up in the manager uh, a couple of uh, brew drinks. And we have some migrants as well. I'll uh, quickly take a look at what they are here in this video and I will then end this video and on the next video talk more about the migrants or actually see uh, see how I how I manage them what uh, what uh, what labors I give them unless they come readily skilled I will start looking a bit on uh, who might be in the military and things like that but uh, let's see let's see what we have Right here, first of all, well, we have the monkey that's not related to those. Let's look at the general view. Uh, the dwarf therapist is an excellent, excellent tool for this, but I will look at these fellows here in the screen first. Okay, we have a great cheese maker, uh, which I won't be doing that much, so I will figure out something else for this guy to do, maybe processing plants. And I get a uh, 
fellow with some military skills, not too much. But uh, he's a great engraver. That is uh, that is great. I haven't done any engraving and stone detailing yet, but I will definitely be doing that uh, later. And this guy will uh, will be a great asset. And then I have a competent hammer dwarf. That's a good news, and also a great record keeper. That's interesting. I might make this uh, this clerk uh, my clerk, and uh, eventually eventually uh, somehow get uh, get her a hammer, and uh, she can be the base for my uh, for my military. Okay, unpausing again. The number of uh, immigrants you get on the first year before the great caravan arrives, it's somewhat random. Uh, you can uh, in one immigration wave get uh, something between 1 and 7 migrants, about. Uh, and then after the first year, after the caravan has uh, been here, the amount of immigrants depends on the wealth your fortress is creating and then uh, on your uh, on your civilization, uh, taken that your civilization is live and kicking, so that there are migrants migrants that can come into your fortress and uh, created wealth is uh, kind of uh, creating attraction for the for the dwarves in the other fortresses to come uh, come to your fortress from your civilization. And uh, here we have adequate dresser and adequate potter. And we have adequate strand extractor, so not 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 very highly skilled. And uh, looks like we have oh, I got I got quite lucky here. I think I had uh, five or five or seven of them. Novice butcher, novice milker, novice beekeeper. So not not very skilled dwarves. This is very common here in the in these two two random random migrant waves. And I think that is it. So if I look at the status, the population is 14. So I got seven migrants. That is uh, that is on the top end of these random waves. So uh, I was quite quite lucky there. With more dwarves, I can do more things. But that also means that I have more mouths to be uh, fed and uh, fed and kept uh, filled with alcohol. So uh, more more things for me to do as well. Um, yeah, I was about to say that sometimes these migrants come with animals, but I don't think I saw any. But I will make sure. So I will take this uh, pen and paster here, press N, and uh, go to the end of the list. And yes, indeed, these migrants didn't come with any animals. That's actually quite rare. Uh, let me see that I, I didn't miss any. No, those are just the monkeys. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get any. Uh, the migrants are a good source of uh, various various animals, and if you are lucky, you get females and males uh, of the of the same animal, and then they start breeding. But uh, that didn't happen. But anyway, the dwarves migrants they uh, run into the meeting area, and then uh, they take some task based on their labors. And before that, I will take a look at all those labors in dwarf therapist. And uh, then continue playing, uh, furnishing furnishing the bedroom area that was dug out. Uh, set those uh, nest boxes that have been partly built into the turkey room, and uh, then the miner will get into digging my uh, new trade depot area, and then I'll be preparing bridges and things like that out there before the caravan arrives. Um, in late autumn, so I have about four months, a bit less than four months until the caravan arrives, which is plenty. I know that one of these migrants will be the stone crafter and churning out uh, stone crafts that I can trade with the traders, but uh, more about that in the next part. Take care, bye bye.